Here's the last problem, and although I've called it a hard problem, I think it's actually easier than the last. But it builds off what we did before. It says, given some f of t, that looks like this triangle. And we're in the time domain. Find f of omega. Well, your first method is to say this is easy. We just did it. According to the last problem, we can recognize that f of t is equal to that boxcar convolves with that boxcar. And since that boxcar has an f of omega, that's a sink. And this has an f of omega, that's a sink. And since convolution in one domain goes to multiplication in the other, the answer must be a sink squared. But you know I'm not going to let you get away with it that easy. So find another way to do it. All right, so one way is to look at the table. But we already looked at that table, and we know it's not there. So let's look for another way. I um, guess we could do the integral definition. We know that f of omega is always equal to the integral, just by definition, of f of t e to the minus j omega t dt. And we just have to substitute in our f of t, which is equal to piecewise. It's equal to t plus 8 if t is less than 0, and it's equal to minus t plus 8 for t greater than or equal to 0. doesn't really matter where we put those equals. We can substitute that into here. We'd have two different integrals, and we could do those, and it would be nasty because we'd have two integrals, firstly, once we just use the distributed property here. And one of those integrals would be a t times and e to the minus j omega naught t, we'd have to use integration by parts, and that would be painful. So let's look for another way. Method four is to use the derivative property. And this is a great shortcut to use whenever you're taking Fourier transforms or inverse Fourier transforms of functions that are flat, or that you could imagine how to take a derivative of. So how hard would it be to draw the derivative of that function? Well, it's clearly 0 out to negative 8. And then at negative 8, it jumps up to having a slope of 1. And then starting at 0 to positive 8, it has a slope of negative 1 and then it's zero. Well, that looks not too bad. We can find boxcars here, and then these boxcars would have to be pushed to the left or to the right. I wonder if we can go one step further than that, though. We know how to push things to the left and the right. That's the time delay property. We know the boxcar. That's the sink. So we'd end up having two delayed boxcars. That's still hard. Let's take another derivative and see what we can come up with. Now, if we take another derivative, we have a 0, 0, 0, 0 here, and all of a sudden, the slope is infinite. So therefore, it's an impulse. We know it's an impulse, because if we were to take the integral of this, it would be 0, 0, 0, 0, and then suddenly it would be a number. We want it to end up at 1, so it has to have an area of 1. Okay. So we've got the first part. Now the derivative of this is 0, so it's going to be 0 out here. Now here, the derivative is infinitely downward, so it's going to be an impulse. And it's got to have, when we integrate this to find this, it's got to go, it's got to have an area that's negative 2 to drop it down by negative 2. Similarly, the derivative of this is 0, and then here, the derivative of this is a positive going impulse again. We want to bring it back up, and we have to bring it up by 1. And that occurs at 8. OK. K 
Can we find the Laplace transform of f double prime of t? Let's just write down what f double prime of t is. So it's equal to this impulse at t plus 8. That's this first one to the left. And then we're going to subtract 2, impulse of t. And then we're going to add an impulse of t minus 8. That's the one on the right. But we know that f prime prime, it's the Laplace transform. Every prime is just like multiplying by a j of omega. So a double prime is like multiplying by j omega squared. h of omega. And the h of omega corresponding to these things, well, this is just a time-advanced impulse. And it's advanced by e to the j a omega. That's one of the first examples we did last class. This is minus 2. Again, the transform of an impulse is 1. And since it's been delayed by 8, we multiply it by e to the minus j 8 omega. And now that we've got this, we can solve for h of omega, which is this divided by j omega squared. j squared is negative 1. So I'll multiply this whole thing through by negative 1 over omega squared. So by dividing it through by this, we'll end up with a 2. I'll bring that in front. Minus, and then we've got that e to the j 8 omega plus e to the minus j 8 omega. And we have to divide all that by omega squared. Oof. This is starting to look an awful lot like an Euler identity, but I need more room for this. So I hope you're OK if I delete the graphics for a moment and bring the math up to the top. So recall. Euler's identities. It's that a cosine of omega equals e to the j omega plus e to the minus j omega all over 2. And a sine of omega equals e to the j omega minus e to the minus j omega all over j2. So which of these two versions does this look the most like? Well, this has a plus, this has a minus, so it looks like cosine. Now we just have to get it into this form. So let's do my favorite trick of writing not what we have, what we wish we had. And we wish we had e to the j 8 omega plus e to the minus j 8 omega all over 2. Because if we had that, it would look exactly like this. So all we need to do to get there is to multiply it by 2. And now this is mathematically the same as the step above. But now we can do a direct substitution. Everything in here is just cosine of 8 omega. And I guess we can factor out a 2 over omega squared here. And that gives us 1 minus cosine of 8 omega. And that's our answer. Now, some of you may call foul at this and say, nope, nope, nope. We just did this problem before. I remember it from here that our answer is right here. And I know that 4 sine squared of 4 omega over omega squared does not look anything at all like this. Turns out, it is. It's a trigonometric identity. It takes a little bit of work to find out. All right, it takes a lot of work to find out. But the truth is that 4 sine squared of 4 omega all over omega squared is, in fact, by a half-angle identity, the same thing as this. So lots of different ways to skin the cat. And of course, the right answer is they're both correct.